You're listening to the Faith Breathed Hope podcast, episode number 159. Today I speak with CEO, wife, boy mom, coffee lover, and hashtag PJ all day enthusiast, Stephanie Gass. Stephanie helps women get clear on their niche, start a podcast, and grow a successful online business God's way. Today, Stephanie and I are speaking about three easy steps to get clear on your calling so that you can confidently start an online business. Welcome to the Faith Breathed Hope podcast, where we gain inspiration and motivation from others who share their touching stories of renewing hope and discovering purpose in any circumstance. I'm your host, Christina Reisinger, and today we will be encouraged by another tremendously inspirational topic that will embolden you to release fear, begin taking small steps forward, and move into your God-given purpose to live and serve in this life. Join me for today's story. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Faith Breathed Hope. I'm your host, Christina, and today I am here with Stephanie Gass. Hey, Stephanie, how are you today? Good. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm so excited that you're here, and uh, I would love for you to just tell the audience a little bit of something that people in your circle may not know about you. Okay, something that people in my circle may not know about me. I don't like cats. Don't hate me. (laughs) I think that cats are so creepy. (laughs) One time when I was little, I must have cat trauma. Oh, I have another one too. But there was a cat that would lay and I I would go to a friend's house or it was somewhere and the cat would lay on my face. Like I was like, it was like going to smother me. And I was like, cats are evil. So that's one thing. And then the second one that just popped in my mind is I'm absolutely terrified of bees. Like a bee (sighs) even comes in my vicinity. I will scream and run like a like a little girl, it's because I had a bee sting me in my hand when I was five and I lifted my hand and the bee was still stuck. And so since then I've been terrified of bees and apparently cats as well. Oh my goodness. That's so crazy. I love cats and I love bees. So, (laughs) um, cats I cannot have because my husband is allergic, but, uh, do you remember one laying on my face one time? And I just thought it was because he loved me so much. (laughs) Maybe that's what it was. You could go with the smothering thing, whatever. All perception. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) So um, today we're actually here to talk about business. And so this is faith breathed hope, meaning that we seek God's face in everything, all aspects of our lives. And that includes finances and business. And so many times um, there are things where Christian women come to a place where they say, I don't know how to start a business because I'm a Christian. I'm not sure that that's something that um, I'm called to do because is it not a ministry type of thing? You know, is it something that I'm even allowed to do? So today we're going to talk about three easy steps to know what your calling is and how you can confidently start a business. So I'm interested to know, because you are the uh, business and podcast guru, uh, you know, we're going to talk about that too in just a minute. But first of all, what, how do we know what our calling is? And, you know, is everybody, does everybody have a calling? Yeah. Yes. You know, when we look at scripture, we were known, right. And we were created before we were in our mother's womb. And so we were crafted perfectly and with intention by God. And so each, each and every one of us, we have this, this creation, like this culmination, I guess, of who we are. And that includes your vocational gifts, your spiritual gifts, the things you're called to do, the experiences that you'll walk out. And I think of it like this beautiful puzzle of your life that God's already put together, but then he takes it all apart and we receive piece by piece as we walk through life until we get to the end result, which is heaven to finally understand what that full puzzle might look like. So yes, everyone has a calling. And sometimes I think where we go wrong is we think we should know what it is 100% without a doubt instead of trusting the one puzzle piece that we've been handed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. We have a storm outside, so I'm not sure if you can hear it in the background, but 
Um, yeah, and I think it's interesting that you bring up that verse because that is actually uh, in in the script for my next podcast. Oh, how funny! <laughs> but, uh, you know how God has knitted us in our mother's womb, and you know the interesting piece to that verse. Everybody knows the part where it says He's knitted us in our womb, but the interesting part to me is that He knew every day of your life that was ordained before you even had one day of your life. Yeah. You know, so you think about how powerful that is. As somebody who knew every single part of your life, all the ups, all the downs. Mm-hmm. And so how powerful is he to um, be able to work in our lives, even when we are unsure of what's going to happen? So how do we, how do we seek God and hear from him on this, in this area? Yeah. So I think it's also important to say that you have different callings in the different categories of your life of who you are. Right. So we're not just one thing. We're not just business women, or we're not just a wife or a mom. We're not just whatever, right. We are, we have different facets to who we are. And so we, I think have different callings in each of those little buckets, if you will. And so I think where we struggle is we think that the calling has to be some big audacious, like to be a millionaire or to be a best-selling author or, and like for some of you it is, and that's fine. But typically the call actually, what I've seen after working with thousands and thousands of students on this, the call is typically a way that we serve other people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sometimes we're missing the call because we're looking for the outcome that would have to do with us instead Mm -hmm. of looking for the way that we would serve and help people Mm -hmm. by what we've been through. So, you know, this could look something like instead of, Oh, I don't know what my calling is introspectively looking at what have I walked through? That was maybe the hardest and we'll go through the four steps, but I just want to paint this picture. That was the hardest or the most difficult, because those are the clues that are going to lead you to how you help other people. It's typically the trials, the traumas, the fears, the the setbacks, right? And we think, let me hide those pieces of me because those must not have anything to do with where I'm going. But the reality is they probably are everything about where you're going and who you're supposed to help. And when we help people, we ultimately move into that next space of potentially it becoming a business or it making revenue or you being able to use it at a larger capacity. So Mm -hmm. I'll give some examples in a while. So let's talk about the steps. And then I think that will give us some dialogue here on actually how to get this done. So the first thing is if you're feeling kind of, how do you know you're not in your calling while well, you're, you're feeling a little bit unfulfilled. So this I find is a clue. I'm unfulfilled. I'm searching. I'm trying this thing and this thing and this thing. And I'm finding myself hiding my head in my phone or distracting myself. Um, a little bit of joylessness, that kind of stuff. If you're feeling that I think it's because you're either avoiding your calling or you don't know what it is. And so you're searching for it in the wrong places Mm because when you're aligned with your call, there's so much, there's so much fulfillment that you could burst. There's so much excitement about what you're doing. Even if it's not clear, you'll know you're in alignment and you're on the, on the right track. So if you're feeling any of that, the first step is to pray. Mm -hmm. Often we look to go and find the solution. We're YouTubing it. We're asking, <laughs> finding a friend, like right. <laughs> go upward instead of outward and ask God, Lord, I'm feeling this way. I think it's because I'm not in alignment with my calling. I don't know my business calling, or I don't know what the next call is in our marriage. I don't know what the next calling is that you have for me personally, Lord, show that to me, help me find it. Give me the resources, the mentors, the clues. I need the next right step, Lord. I'm here for it. I'm willing Mm -hmm. Often we just have to ask. And I, I believe that God gives us the way and not always fully clearly, most often not, but he does get, he's not a God of confusion. The next thing will appear or the door will come or the conversation will happen. And you'll know, oh, this is the next right step. So prayer, the second, do you want to add anything there? And then I'll move to the second step, Christina. Well, well, you've got a lot of stuff. I mean, one of the things I'm just going to kind of repeat what I'm hearing here. Um, from what you said is this idea of service a, um, you know, we talk about our purpose. So many people want to know what their purpose is. It's like a calling it's being of service to his kingdom. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. And then, um, stewardship, I heard that in there. So knowing that God has given us these gifts and talents and what are we doing? And, um, you know, I almost, I almost want to say sometimes it's a forced calling, uh, (laughs) 
being that we're ho humming along in our, our life and then something big may happen to us. And so it's almost like a wake up call. And like you said, um, we're really aligned with that. And so we understand how we are of service of people because of those events that have happened. So um, yeah, what's the next step? So that's, okay. that's cool. <laughs> So the next step is to inventory. This is a little bit what I alluded to a moment ago. This is looking backwards. So like Christina just brought up, what are the big things that have happened in your life? And you want to look at, maybe you would call them like a negative or even a hard thing, a traumatic thing potentially. And then you also want to look at the really good things, the really positive things, the really life-changing things. You want to make a big list of all of those things. And then what we want to do is try to try to find the common denominators. Mm -hmm. So well, I'm skipping ahead. So first we inventory, we put everything out on the sheet of paper and we just get it all out of you. And you want to think about also last thing when you're inventorying here is what do you naturally lean into too, right? What do you naturally like? I love that so much, or I'm constantly thinking about that, or I'm drawn to that thing. Like Right. Everything in you is pulling to, to a person or to a thing or to a topic or to a style of showing up. All of that are clues. Okay. So you have all of this, like do it on a big whiteboard, a couple of big poster boards. And then the third step is to, I call it discovery. Okay. So in the discovery phase, now we're trying to create links. So we're looking through maybe the hard things or the things that were difficult and we're looking for anything that associates to what happened in the positive column. And we're creating some color coding. <laughs> we're looking for, Ooh, I'm obsessed with when I get to speak or when I get to lead. And that has something to do with when I went through this hard thing of not being able to speak when I was a kid being oppressed from speaking, which then led me to breaking through from that and becoming going through speaking in college. Right. And then now I'm ultimately a speaker and I want to teach other people to speak. You see how like you will be able to find these things that link together in all the different areas. And you're looking for the big core common denominator. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit of detective work to get there, but everyone that goes through my course, I've, one of my courses is called clarify your calling. That's the process. It's to find what I call, which is step four, the root. We're trying to find the root and there's lots of little pieces and seeds and sprinklings that might be a bit confusing for a moment. Like, Oh, but I also love mountain biking over here. Okay. That's okay. We like, that. We like that. <laughs> but like, come back to the root. Let's cut that one out. Cause it doesn't have anything to do with this core theme that we're finding. So what we're kind of trying to do is figure out all the pieces that go together. And then all the other stuff is okay. Those are all the other pieces of who you are, but you can kind of put those in a little bucket off to the side. Cause the purpose of this is to find the one big core calling that you're supposed to lean into right now. So once you've found that root. That's the thing that you're going to go lean into, right? And that can be, I mean, I've seen everything across the board. I've seen, man, my root right now is that I'm just, I'm called to homeschool. My root is that I'm going to be a declutter coach. My root is I help women find identity in Christ. My root is helping couples find wealth. My root is that I went through abuse and now I'm an abuse recovery advocate for kids. Like I have heard any and everything in the entire world. And that's the point that God has a very, very unique calling for you. The worst thing that you can do is look around at what other people are doing and decide that that's your calling. It's the worst thing you can do. It's a disservice to you. It's a disservice to the, the goal that God has for you. We've got to go upward and inward to get this answer. And then when we start working on that, God will then allow you to go outward. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I heard something that was key and I think might be really interesting to the audience that you use the words right now. So uh, earlier I was listening to uh, a different podcast on my run and I actually think it was somebody that I heard on your show. So I turned over and looked for her, but um, she talked about being able to release uh, that thing that you're doing to move on to another one. So in other words, being given permission. And I know that it resonated with me because I felt like God wanted me to do X, Y, or Z right now. And then I felt just because uh, it was something I felt God wanted me to do that I had to continue to do it and it didn't feel aligned anymore. So can you speak to that for just a second on this idea of maybe that calling can change over time? Oh my gosh, your calling is absolutely an evolution, right? 
we will never know what the ultimate puzzle is until we get to heaven truly. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is we're trying to get closer. We're trying to get to the clearest vision of what that is. And until we take action, first it's give God your yes. Then it's, you start to get this muddy picture. So you take a couple steps in the mud and you get mud everywhere and it's messy. Right. And you're like, well, maybe this is it, but then you get out of the rainstorm and you're walking and it's a bit more clear. And you realize like, Ooh, I've got two ways to go here. They're both in the same category, but you have a choice. And so you kind of lean into this one and maybe that wasn't it. So you go over here. It's a constant journey and evolution of you figuring out the ultimate call. Mm -hmm. And it absolutely changes. I'll give you an example. You know, I have always been called to business, born a businesswoman. I was constantly a leader. I was the front and center of the play at seven years old, bossing everyone around on the stage. You're <laughs> the tree. Stop talking, Tommy. Right. <laughs> well, that was me. And ended up going into network marketing, built a really big flourishing network marketing company. The whole thing crumbled. It was worldly success. Anyways, God taught me a lot, got back up, started this other business, started coaching, um, started a podcast. And the podcast was first for network marketers because that's what I knew. That's what I had done. That's what God showed me. He showed me how to build a business online. So, okay, well he didn't, I did that. So I taught the women to do that, but then that business had crumbled so then I realized, oh, I'm supposed to talk to women about the world's way of building a business versus God's way of building a business, rebranded. It became the Stephanie Gash show, did that for a while, then really realized that social media had to go out of my life and podcasting was going to be the way that we grow as my students and my community and audience and making money and really went to this really cool place in my kingdom authority, as far as like making favor for the kingdom of God and being okay with really big impact and income rebranded to online business for Christian women. That's a four and a half year evolution, right. Of, of a calling. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, if I had never started the podcast in the first place for network marketers, because of where I had been, I would have never gotten to the next step, the next phase mm -hmm. of the clarity. So mm -hmm. we sit and wait for ultimate clarity instead of taking action, which is the only way to actually get clarity is to move. Mm -hmm. So long answer to say, yeah, it changes. <laughs> Well, I, I just think it's really neat how God uh, moves us through things. Like, for instance, I, my undergrad was in communications and theater. So I was going to be the next news anchor. Yeah. And move my way in all different markets. And here, you know, I ended up homeschooling and all the things. And now uh, we're on a podcast. So I thought, well, maybe that's how God is using that particular thing because I've had the pleasure of meeting people all over the world now. And that's really exciting. Um, but God uses us in our situations as his vessel if we are willing and if we surrender. Uh, so I think that's super, super exciting, but we have to be willing to do that. We have to be willing to allow that change to happen in our time and him to use our situations. Um, I know that you are uh, big into helping other women. And so I have a question. I hope it doesn't uh, throw you for a loop too much, but uh, when someone says a, a Christian woman says, Hey, you know what? I think I know my calling, but I'm not sure if this is for business or if it's really for ministry. I know that can be an entire other episode on its own, but do you have any encouragement in that area? Yeah. I think that we should always start with service forward, right? With service first. And so in any bit in anything like, you know, for us to go, well, I've decided that, you know, I'm going to help couples create wealth. Well, shouldn't that also start service forward and you starting the podcast or starting the YouTube or putting some tips out into the world to just bless people with what you have as you grow an audience. And then as you're growing this audience, you, what, what will happen for you if you start with service first is people start asking for exactly the one thing that they need. And at that point in time, you can discern, is this going to be a for-profit, not profit or a ministry because I'm being asked to give people this thing. And so that answer is going to come through really clearly for you after you just start after you just, and I promise God will give you that clarity. I've had women, you know, they come to me and they're like, well, I want to create an identity in Christ podcast. And so we create a podcast and they're working on, you know, Bible, this and hearing from God and that kind of stuff. But what we actually find that the, let's say that the listener, this is just an example is struggling with is they don't know how to tactically go through scripture in a way that they can understand. So maybe 
this person has this big ministry where she pours out, but she also has something if they want to pay for whatever it might be like, um, like a Bible navigation toolkit or something, right. Which great. You're not selling the word you're selling a tool or a resource that can help support the word. So I think you got to trust yourself and trust God enough to know that he will give you that answer. And if it is ministry, which that has also happened for some of my students, they're like, Ooh, man, I I've heard clearly this is ministry. They start receiving financial blessings somewhere else to support the ministry. So really what I'm saying is you've got to trust and maybe you don't know the answer yet and that that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. That goes back to that stewardship thing and trusting God and seeking his face. Um, and that's actually how some things happened in my life as well. After our daughter passed away, um, I did start the show, but I was certified as a grief coach and then decided that coaching was, was great. It was beneficial, but it wasn't something I felt was uh, a business calling. I felt like it was more of a ministry. So anyways, uh, Stephanie, I really appreciate you sharing this. Uh, I know that podcasting is something that uh, you help other people go through, and I'd love for you to share where uh, they can find you and how you are doing this and how you can help them. Yeah. So one of the things I'm really passionate about is once you have that ministry clarity or the business clarity, the next step, how I teach to grow an audience is through podcasting, because I believe that the world has this lie and this facade that is all over that you have to spend 15 to 20 hours a week on social media, repurposing, creating content. And I've just found that data doesn't lie. And for me, while I found myself completely addicted to social media and my phone, and I felt like I was capitalizing on my kids to create cute videos that would connect with people and missing out on meaningful moments that it wasn't actually creating leads or revenue for my company. And God kept telling me to lay it down, but I kept gripping it because I thought I had to have it to grow. Mm -hmm. so I finally started to lay it down. I got off on the weekends. This was about six years ago now. And something changed in my heart. I could see clearly I was at peace. I would lose my phone every weekend and I never felt so free. <laughs> and I heard about three years later, lay it down more. And so I got rid of Instagram for a year. I'm sorry for 30 days. And then six months everything exploded, Christina, the podcast, the email list, the revenue team, all of it. And I knew that God was showing me a different way to grow a business or to grow an audience or to grow my, to grow, um, to get out there in a scalable way that wasn't so much time and energy and intention. And it was podcasting and the podcast completely exploded. We've had, we've passed 1.3 million downloads, top 25 show in the world without without a social pre presence for my company. Wow. And um, why I'm so passionate about that is because I believe that can be the vessel for anyone that mm -hmm. podcasting is long form. There's no shelf life that there's no algorithm. You can show up in as little as two hours a week and actually grow a business that makes money because there's conversion. When people listen and go deep with you and trust you, they'll decide to work with you. And if it's a ministry, people are actually going to be reaching out doing what you're teaching because they're so inspired and they actually connected with you on the podcast. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm passionate about that. And I have a free workshop where everybody can listen and learn more about podcasting. It's podcastforgrowth.com. And I know Christina, you have links mm -hmm. that you will share, um, to mm -hmm. my actual courses. Cause I've got clarify your calling, which is for those of you who are thinking, well, maybe I want to start a business or a ministry, but like, I have no idea. Stuff lost me back in inventory step. Like <laughs> then clarify your calling is for you. It's a four week program that you're going to walk through to figure out what that common denominator is so that you can move forward with a business plan. Um, so the link Christina has for you guys, and then, or you are interested in starting a podcast to grow your business or to grow your ministry. And you don't know how you want to walk through that with me. I've got 12 steps. You can get that podcast completely planned, launched, learn how to edit and record everything, how to set it up, what goes into it, how to make it super simple, super affordable, by the way, and stop doing all that extra stuff that isn't actually working in the first place. Mm -hmm. Get that podcast launched and you can do it in under 30 days if you'd like to. I'm so excited for that because I know a lot of times there's just like a disconnect between, uh, Hey, I want to do this. I have a passion for this. And then how do I implement it? So sometimes we do need 
to walk alongside someone else so that it makes it just a little easier and less stressful uh, and we can stand in that creativity. So thank you, Stephanie. I'm going to ask you one other question before we head out. Usually I do this before um, I have you tell about yourself, but do you have any encouragement for the lady out there um, who says, hey, you know what? really want to uh, jump into my calling, but I feel like God is calling me to a place of rest right now because you spoke about that earlier with the social media. And I really feel like that kind of relates to just hearing from God and, and the obedience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's different seasons. There are rest seasons. There are sprint seasons. There are seasons of deep connection with your family, seasons of deep connection to your business or your purpose work in, in that kind of vocational space. And so I think you've got to lean into what God's asking of you. It's an act of trust. It's an act of belief that he can take care of the other areas when you're focused on another one. And I know that, um, so many of you might struggle with rest. And so start with where you are. Like I started with just the weekends, deleting the apps was my first act of rest. <laughs> and once I experienced it, my spirit started to crave more rest and started to, I started to feel, and then I, I was seeing the blessing from the rest. So then I was like, how do I rest more? I'm excited to rest. And God gave me the time to rest. He gave me the team to allow rest to become a part of my life. But I had to do that first act of resting. Right. So yes, I encourage you to lean into that. If you're feeling that don't just feel it, do it. Yes. That call to obedience is important. So yeah, I have a, a similar story just recently. I am not tech savvy at all. And um, other than being able to edit, I can edit. <laughs> but uh, something happened on my phone and I noticed that the notifications were silent. And I have an eight-year-old who uh, loves to take the phone every time she has. She's on, what is it, Kids Messenger or something like that. Just recently she found friends <laughs> and she must have pushed a button. And all of a sudden I didn't receive any of my notifications. Nice. And at first I was like a little aggravated, you know, I was like, what, what's going on with this? But then I realized it's such a blessing. Now I'll, <laughs> I can actually get through something without being uh, notified every two seconds and interrupted. So <laughs> yeah, that's one of my number one tips for living distracted, yeah. free and focused is you have to eliminate every single notification from your phone. Okay. Like, Everybody needs an eight-year-old then, right? <laughs> Everybody needs an eight-year-old. Seriously. It's like, and, and this is what I mean. Like, why do we allow these things to be part of our life when they're not really beneficial? And why don't we make changes? Yes. Because the fruit is on the other side of actually being disciplined enough to say, I don't need this anymore. I'm going to go ahead and make a change in my life. And watching what happens when you do that, like the clarity and the time that I got back, it's just, and that's one of many ways that you can eliminate distraction. Right. Right. I feel like we could talk about so many different things yeah. that would be beneficial. Um, but our time is up and I'd love for you to once again, tell everybody where to find you. And then we're going to sign off here. Awesome. Well, thanks for hanging with me, everybody. So you can come to stephaniegas.com. That's S T E F A N I E G A S S.com. I've got free gifts. I have a podcast called online business for Christian women. Everything can be found over there and I can't wait to meet you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thank and you. for all of you guys, we will have everything in the show notes, her uh, website and the uh, links to her courses as well. So thank you everyone for joining us. Continue to be blessed and bless others. And we will see you next time. So you've listened to Unlimited Podcast, binged on your favorites and brought new influencers into your life. You enjoy learning, listening, and implementing techniques and strategies that you glean from podcasters to enhance your daily tasks, and now you're wondering how they do it. Maybe you're even feeling led to teach and influence others yourself. If you want to begin creating evergreen content that works for you forever with no algorithms, no video to record, and virtually zero overhead, Podcast Pro University may be right for you. At Podcast Pro University, Stephanie Gass teaches you how to create your content so that you can teach others, generate leads, and make money from behind the mic. Start your very own podcast in 30 days with Stephanie's step-by-step -step framework. You will learn how to build your podcast plan, pick your podcast title, create your content plan, record and edit your episodes, 
find interview guests, craft show notes, launch your podcast, promote episodes, understand analytics, and be featured as a guest on other shows. If you can't wait to start your very own show, click the link in the show notes and join Podcast Pro University today. And I want to thank you for joining us on Faith Breathe Hope, where you gain inspiration and motivation to renew hope and discover purpose in any circumstance. Please like and share this podcast and give us a review on iTunes. Be blessed.